All right. Hey, we're going to go ahead and get started. Um, first and foremost, good morning, everyone. Super grateful that you are here today. Um, as you think about this weather, remember this. In January, you were like, oh, I can't wait till it gets hot. So it is now here, and I'm uh, so super grateful to be here this morning. So thank you so, so, again so much for coming. Uh, my name is Leroy, and um, I'm a local pastor here in Buffalo, uh, as well as a volunteer leader with Eight Days of Hope. And I'm just super excited for yet another summer uh, of being able to do some really, really great work uh, out in the community. Again, being the hands and the feet and the gospel presence all over the place and bringing the Church of Western New York together. Uh, so I'm just really, really excited for all of that this morning. Um, so one of the things I want to do, where is Ben? Ben is a guy running around putting up all the fans and stuff. So you want to make sure, well, whenever, I don't see him in here right now, but uh, Ben uh, of Matt Urban Center, I want to thank him so much for allowing us to be here this morning uh, and all the things that he's doing to make sure that uh, we are comfortable. Um, so it's grateful for that. Um, I don't know if there are any necessarily housekeeping things we need to be mindful of at this point in time, but I do believe uh, restrooms are on the second floor. So um, if you need to uh, do that, then, then go right ahead. Um, we won't be here super, super long, right, Steve? Three hours, I think you were telling me? Well, you told me I had 25 minutes for a message. Oh, okay, all right, well, so much for that. So we won't be here super, super long, uh, but we are super grateful uh, that you are here. Um, in just a moment, I'm gonna pray, and I'm gonna turn it over to Mike, and Mike is uh, another volunteer leader. He's also a board member, uh, and also a Buffalo, uh, Buffalo guy also that uh, just, again, loves the Lord, and um, I've worked with him pretty extensively last year and looking forward to doing that um, again this year. So he's gonna come up and give you a little bit more information in just a moment. Um, but let's just go before the Lord and pray if we could. Heavenly Father and Savior and Creator, Lord Jesus Christ, we thank you so very much for this morning. A morning that you had predestined a long, long time ago that we would be here, we'd be up, you'd put breath in our lungs, you'd put a beat in our hearts, oh Lord, for that every breath and every beat may it be for you. We ask your blessings right now on our time together as we look to see what you have in store uh, for the Western New York area and relates to Eight Days of Hope and bringing the uh, love of Jesus Christ to every home in the area, Lord. We've, we've blessed this ministry so greatly uh, over the years and we have no reason to think that you're not gonna do the same thing again now. So we just ask that you go before us, that we would follow you in whatever direction you lead, we will follow. So, Lord, thank you so much for, again, for Eight Days of Hope and Steve and his team and volunteers all across the world who are starting to amass and get their hearts ready to come to Buffalo once again. So, God, we love you, we thank you, and we praise you. For in the precious name of Jesus Christ, our risen Lord and Savior, amen. amen. Thank you so much, Michael. Yes. No, Pastor Leary, how long did you say Steve had? Three hours? Okay, so I'll take about 45 minutes for the introduction here. <laughs> No, listen, I believe we're all in the right place at the right time. God is doing so much in the city of Buffalo and has been through eight days of hope through, I know, the 15 years I've been with them and the 17 years they've been in existence. But this morning, you're going to hear some amazing stories, uh, how God birthed a national ministry of eight days of hope. You'll hear about the multiple arms and some facts and figures. Steve's a great facts and figures man and also a man of God that's going to touch your heart. But who likes inside stories? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, like, behind-the-scenes stories? I mean, like, who, who, no. Here's an honest story. Steve and I have had a good relationship for years, and I get a phone call about four years ago. And uh, now, at that time, he's in corporate America, the top of his game, you know, and just doing so well. And he says, uh, and at the same time, he's leading eight days of hope for free. Now, he says, Mike, I'm thinking of leaving the corporate world and going into ministry. And, you know, I, he said, what do you think? I didn't want to say what I first thought. <laughs> I've been in ministry for years, and I'm thinking corporate pay and then ministry pay. But then I said, stop it. You know, everybody in this room here that's been in ministry or is serving in a public office knows the value of giving, serving, and loving. And this is what Steve has done. So I, I, I believe... Um, that Steve was destined to be full-time as the leader of Eight Days of Hope, a catalyst to change the face of ministry in the way we look at really loving and serving Jesus in this generation, in this country, and Steve, in this city. God's making an impact. It's going to, I believe, earmark across our nation what happened in Buffalo, New York, 
as a result of the churches, the community, and Eight Days of Hope coming together. So would you join me in welcoming the President and CEO of Eight Days of Hope, Steve Tyron. Thank you. Well, that was very nice. I'm going to take you to lunch now, Mike. You said all those nice things. Hey, we are so thankful that you're here today. And, you know, we're based in Mississippi, and our friends that traveled from Mississippi apparently brought the weather because this is, uh, it's pretty warm here today. But, um, you know, it's, it's amazing to me when uh, being a man of faith, when God connects the dots. And uh, for, for me, uh, and just to see where Eight Days of Hope started and, and where we're at today, and more, most importantly, the vision and the, um, the outreach that's going to happen this summer, we're going to get to in just a minute. Um, I'm going to introduce some city leaders here in a couple seconds, but very quickly, I want to give you a four-minute overview of a 17-year journey. So, Eight Days of Hope, uh, we're a national ministry based in Mississippi. Uh, we started after Hurricane Katrina. The thought was to help out somebody rebuild their home for free, my dad and I and a couple buddies. Well, we end up taking 684 people. Uh, it was our smallest trip ever, but in eight days, we built 84 homes. So we have a couple of arms of our natural disaster side. We rebuild homes and we go the next day, tarp roofs to chainsaw work, muck out homes, and so much more. A couple years ago, uh, learned about trafficking. It's real, it's happening. Uh, it happens in Buffalo, it happens in Niagara Falls, it happens in Batavia. Um, we are now building uh, facilities for ministries for free, large facilities for free, uh, to provide hope to those, uh, the women and children who've been rescued from sex trafficking. It's the fastest growing crime in the world. Uh, that facility there is Frank and Linda Reich, their facility in Indianapolis. We renovated that building, gutted it out from wall to wall, uh, in 17 days, renovated a 17,000 square foot facility for free that Frank and Linda are using to support children, children rescued from trafficking. I have five children. Just think about that for a second. Um, actually, today, we're in Jackson, Tennessee. Today is day number one. We're rebuilding a facility, renovating a facility for a ministry called Scarlet Rope. It's our ninth project to date, and uh, so excited to do that. Uh, we just announced in August, for the whole month, we're going to be in Chattanooga, Tennessee, building a facility for the Tim Tebow Foundation. So Tim Tebow, this is his first facility in America. They want eight days hope to do it. The answer is yes. We're just here to love and serve the brokenhearted. And um, so excited about that as well. Uh, we're, we're starting a new army. Oh, uh, so that's where we've been over the years. We've even gone to Hawaii. We've gone to the Bahamas. But all those yellow dots means that we took thousands of volunteers to serve families in need across the country. $62 million of work now has been completed by volunteers, because we're pretty much a volunteer organization. 180 volunteer leaders, including about a dozen in Western New York. I think some are here today. We'll introduce them at the end. But so thankful that we've been able to travel from coast to coast. We're based in Mississippi. Here's a, uh, our national headquarters, our training facility. Um, I'm sorry. I, I got to tell you about a new arm. We're, we're launching a new arm next month. Uh, we've invested over a million dollars in equipment to produce a mass feeding unit. The mass feeding unit will be able to produce 8,000 meals in 120 minutes. So when there's a disaster like Hurricane Harvey or Hurricane Ida, uh, we will park at a local church. We do everything through local churches. And we'll park at a local church. We're going to make 8,000 meals in two hours, and that local church will be there handing out the food to families in need. We saw this after Hurricane Ida. There was no power in Laplace, Louisiana for 27 days. And we saw more ministry happen over that time. We have about $3.2 million of equipment. And, and this is a God testimony because over the last four years, four years ago, Mike, we had a pickup truck that was used that was donated and 20,000 hours of tools. But God has blessed this ministry. People have given specifically for this equipment and the facilities. You'll see it here in a minute. And we're debt free and we're going to remain debt free. Amen. So when God moves, amen. When God moves and he provides, we move. And when he doesn't provide, we don't move. Because it's not about us. It's not about me. It's about him moving through us. But that's some of the beautiful equipment we have. We have equipment uh, in Mississippi and elsewhere. Um, go ahead. Our national headquarters is in Tupelo, Mississippi. Uh, some donors came together. It's a 60,000 square foot building. We also train our volunteer leaders there. Multiple times a year we bring volunteer leaders in and we train them so they can do things like Eight Days of Hope Buffalo. 
Uh, so that's really cool as well. Uh, our Northeast satellite is on Kensington Avenue. You know, I was praying that we would come up to Buffalo because I wanted to come back home. Because uh, if you have a laptop, you get an airplane and a phone, you can do ministry across the country from anywhere. And a donor said, hey, um, are you looking for a building? I said, I am. Maybe about 10, 15,000 square feet. And we're praying that it's free. That's what we're praying for. And the guy said, well, what about a 100,000 square foot building? I said, we don't need that. We, that's way too big of a building. But then I prayed about it over the weekend, and the word I kept hearing was incubator. Incubator. I'm like, what's an incubator? But in this building, there's 13 ministries that uh, are based in this building, and they're uh, ministries in the inner city, just loving and serving families. And so, you know, you have dads doing a, a basketball program with young boys. You have Gwen Curry, the Grant Lady. We have Mona's House providing a safe place for women who's been rescued from trafficking in Buffalo. Hearts for the Homeless, Teacher's Desk, and they stay there at a huge discount. Uh, and so we just love that God has us here in Buffalo, New York. And then we opened up last year in Iowa, Cedar Rapids, Iowa. So we could be at three different parts of the country at the same time. We could be in Pennsylvania helping out with flooding, building a safe house in Tennessee like we are today, while we're helping out hurricane victims in Houston. Because we have equipment that can move very quickly, like a fire truck, right? Very quickly we can go. And so we're excited about that as well. Um, so eight days of Hope Buffalo, the vision was simple. I remember meeting with Donna Russo, John Camardo, and uh, Ryan Cozy, who's no longer in the area, and Art Hall. We met at Starbucks. I hadn't moved to Buffalo yet. Actually, we hadn't even decided we were moving to Buffalo. But I was praying that God would allow us to find a way to serve the city of good neighbors, because this is my hometown. I mean, I grew up on Bennett. I mean, I grew up on Crescent, went to Bennett High School. I'm a city boy. Um, and I, I shared with them the vision of finding a way to do eight days of a buffalo. And they're like, well, what disaster is going to come hit buffalo in the middle of the summer? You know, I mean, it doesn't snow in July most of the time, right? It's not going to snow today. Um, and so we just, I said, just pray with us that if that door opens up, we can do this. And so uh, when God opened the door for us to be here in the city of Buffalo, very quickly in 2019, uh, we worked with Councilman Rashid Wyatt, who is like one of my all-time favorite people in America, and we, we served in the university district. Uh, we had to take a year off because of COVID, uh, but then last year we were in the Maston district. So those two years, eight days of hope in Buffalo, um, served 577 families. Is that crazy? 577 families, yeah. Over 2,700 volunteers served with us. And they did painting and roofing and carpenter work and cleaned out gutters and they cut people's lawns and they hedged their bushes and they just loved people. And it didn't matter where you were at, if you went to church or never went to church, uh, it didn't matter if you were rich or poor, white or black, a refugee family that just moved to Buffalo, it didn't matter. We just, it's very simple. We want to love and serve people. We're not complicated. I'm not a smart guy, I promise you. I say this all the time. I went to college for six years. It was a four-year school, all right? But if you keep it simple and you love and serve people, he does amazing things. So um, Buffalo has been an amazing outreach for us. Over the last two years, 2019-21, um, we accomplished about $1.8 million of work. And here's what I love. An average of 70 churches and businesses partnered with us. Yeah. We didn't see this coming. So we do disasters, and normally contractors, they can't donate time because they're busy for like the next three years, and they've tripled their prices. But when we came here, you know, we saw Stockmore Windows and Doors, and Niagara Gutter, and Turk Masters, and Ava Roofing, and Damix Roofing, and so many more, Salino Plumbing and Frank's Plumbing, saying, hey, we want to be a part of this. We're like, yeah, cool, come, come help. And so um, we said we would try it one year. And I'm wrapping up with this. We said we would do it again if three things happen. Would local churches and businesses jump on board? They have, 70, average 70 both years. Would local volunteers show up? Well, 2,700 people, out of those 2,700, 1,900 were from Western New York, 800 came from around the country. So that happened, that was great. Three, could we raise all the money locally needed for this project? We can't take money that was given for Hurricane Ida to bring to the inner city of Buffalo. That's not fair, that's not right. And so this project's a standalone project. We'll talk about that in a couple more minutes. Uh, but today I'm excited to, um, to introduce a video to you, and then we're going to have the councilman come up. So today what we're excited to do is we're excited to announce that 8 Days of Buffalo is coming back to the city of Buffalo July 16th to the 23rd, 8 Days of Hope Buffalo. We're coming to the beautiful Fillmore District. Yeah, yeah amen. Yes. Yes.
I literally was born on Townsend. My grandmother owned a home at 190 Wilson. She used to walk me as a little kid to the Broadway market to get a, a, a roll and some butter because we didn't have a lot growing up. And, and I just love this area. And the fact that we're coming to Fillmore District, I am so pumped, wow. so pumped. So we're gonna show you the three minute, 50 second video that you can share on social media, at your church, at your business. And then we're gonna ask Councilman Mitch Nowowski to come up and, and say hello to you as well. So here's our promotional video. We can't wait. here in the city of Buffalo. Every day, my office receives numerous calls from residents that are seeking help. Many of those needs are housing needs. Eight Days of Hope has a tremendous reputation here in the city of Buffalo and has transformed neighborhoods in other districts. I'm thrilled that they're coming to the Fillmore District. Miss Marianne, here on Motel Street, was one of those callers that called my office seeking help. And now, Eight Days of Hope will give her an opportunity of a lifetime. I love my home. I would love to stay in it. And I've been here since 2002 when I bought the house. Along the way, I end up with lung cancer, but I still would love to stay in my house. I love my house. steps need to be repaired. The part that you turn to shower to, the plug to, for the bath, I can't turn it anymore. Hi, I'm Steve Tyler with Eight Days of Hope. Do you know Eight Days of Hope has traveled the country to help out families in need after natural disasters? 8,000 families have had volunteers show up to help them rebuild their homes for free. A couple years ago, we started a new project called Eight Days of Hope Buffalo, where we pick out a district in the city of Buffalo and volunteers from Western New York, in fact, from around the country, come here and serve families with free home repairs. July 16th through the 23rd, volunteers are coming to Buffalo, right here in the Fillmore District. Every year during the Eight Days of Buffalo, we work on a community project where we can impact hundreds of families, and this year, Councilman, we're here at the Lincoln Park, and this is a unique park. Why, why is this a unique park in your district? This is really a park that is oftentimes overlooked and forgotten, and I make an emphasis as council member of the Fillmore District to make sure that no neighborhood is forgotten. And I'm thrilled that Eight Days of Hope is finally going to give this much needed park attention and to make sure that it's not forgotten. You know, if you volunteer with Eight Days of Buffalo, you can serve here, helping spruce up the pool area, working on fencing, some park benches, and so much more. Again, can't wait for volunteers to be here at this park. Just like years past, if you come serve with us for at least three days during the Eight Days of Hope Buffalo, we're gonna give you a free ticket to go to Darien Lake and be a part of Kingdom Bound 2022. Tell me that, for King and Country, we are messengers, Ben Fuller, and so many more. Serve with us here at the City of Good Neighbors and then come hang out with us at Darien Lake and be a part of Kingdom Out 2022. I'm here with Miss Marianne and Councilman Okowski, and now you get a chance to make a difference. It's right here in the City of Buffalo, the Fillmore District. July 16th to the 23rd, everyone's invited. It's free. We're going to feed you really good. You're going to meet some amazing people from around the country. July 16th to the 23rd, go to 8dayshope.com for more information. That's 8dayshope.com. Yeah, that came out good, didn't it? Yeah, yeah it did. Nice Thank you. And so that is up on our website. It's on our social media sites. You can share it. We can send it to you. Uh, if you're a local church, uh, we're going to talk about that in a minute. Um, you really want to get the word out. But, you know, you can't do this unless you have an amazing partner. And I've only got a chance to know Councilman um, a little bit. Um, over the, I only met him once actually before we announced we were doing the Fillmore District. But working, I tell you, we travel the country, and not everywhere do you travel does everyone work well with you. They just don't because people, you know, view you as an outsider. Or, you know, can they trust you? 
But when I met Council, Councilman Mitch Nowowski and his staff, I was just like blown away. I mean, they loved their district. And he, I mean, I mean, I gave him a hug. I mean, it was a bear hug. The dude about picked me up and threw me down. He was so excited. And we call him one take Councilman Mitch because I told Councilman Wyatt, it took him seven takes. It took him one take to shoot that. He's amazing. So Councilman, come on up and say hello to everyone, please. Well, give it up for Councilman. He's a great advocate for this district. Thank you, Steve. And uh, it's really a wonderful time to be here in the district and to be here in Broadway Fillmore. And uh, every council member is a booster for their district. They're gonna say, Steve, you gotta come into my district. And from day one, when you went to university, they said, no, 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 no. You need to come to the Fillmore district. We need you here. I got Pastor Charles Walker who will tell you who's here on Broadway that this is an area that oftentimes is overlooked and forgotten. And it's my job to tip over every apple cart in town to make sure I get resources and people to love and uplift uh, this area in the Fillmore District because when you look around especially in the housing stock around here It's extremely dilapidated. So where we're seeing dilapidation. We're also seeing investment in certain parts and uh, Multiple things can be true at the same time and we've had folks that have lived here their entire life like Sister Mary Janis at the Response to Love Center and Kosciuszko Street uh, Steve's gonna do really well with Polish names and streets after the, after after this of being in the district. That's for sure. And uh, we are also here with uh, our council chaplains, uh, Robin uh, De Al Warner and his wife, Deb. Uh, so we, they also know a lot about our district and what the importance is. And I'm extremely thrilled that this is a once in a lifetime opportunity that the yeah. Fillmore District will be able to get and to bless over 100 families and households. And a lot of our calls that come to the, the office, you can ask my staff, is I need a roof, I need porches, I need windows, I need siding, I need doors. And I call those things front porch priorities. Oftentimes when politicians get to a microphone, they say, well, I'm doing a training center, I'm doing something that's very abstract. And real people want to see real things yeah. done when they see dollar signs getting yeah. announced. Yeah. And this is, what, this is what it's all about. It's really making sure we take one house at a time, one block at a time, with one person at a time, and revitalizing neighborhoods. So I'm thrilled, and I would be remiss if I don't give uh, the microphone for 30 seconds to my uh, partner in crime and in government, Legislator Howard Johnson, who represents this district in the Erie County Legislature. Thank you, Council Member. Thank you, Steve. Eight Days of Hope. Um, like you said, a lot of times folks don't work together, but me and Mitch, you know, since we all both came in at the same time, we work well together and we, we understand the greatest need has been in the Fillmore District. Out of all the districts I represent, you know, Fillmore District is the most impoverished district in the city. Yeah. So, you know, I'm here in support of him. I want to thank Steve Tabor. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. So, um, just a couple more details, uh, a little bit. You know, we, our goal is very simple, to love and serve people in need. Um, now, we're faith-based. We are who we are. We have 180 volunteer leaders. And here's the cool thing. They represent 11 different denominations. Baptists and Catholic, Pentecostals, non-dominant denomination. Um, I mean, you, you name it. Methodist, our leaders, different denominations. We set aside our, our, our tiny differences to agree on one thing. God's called us to love him and love others. I told you I'm not very bright, but I can remember that. Love him, love others. So this year in July, our goal is you and I, you and us, us and you, work together to bless as many families as possible. But what we're announcing today that we're committing that no matter what, 100 families in the Fillmore District are either need a brand new porch, their house painted, uh, their fence fixed, a uh, brand new roof, uh, plumbing taken care of. Uh, we're excited to do this project, but now we need your help. We need churches and business to come alongside us. There's many ways you can do that. It starts with prayer. We're faith-based. I believe in prayer. It works. I've seen it personally. I've seen it for the ministry. Secondly, volunteer. Get your business and your church and your friends. Use your social media accounts to communicate about eight days of hope Buffalo. Not to bring any attention to us. To bring attention to what he's doing through us in July. Share it with passion. Um, so pray, volunteer. Lastly, uh, I'm going to be candid with you. Donate. We're going to need some help on this trip. This is the first time in three years we don't have a major sponsor. Okay, we've been 
it, God has blessed us. The first two trips, we had a major partner that was willing to write a triple-figure check, and yet we had so many other churches and business allow us to do so much to accomplish this $1.8 million of work. We're going to show in a couple minutes how you can do that, but I want to walk through first the application process. So it's simple. If you own your home in the Fillmore District and you live in the home, so you're not a renter, you know, you're not a rentee, you don't rent your house, but if you live in your house and you own the house, you can pick up an application today, either at our building, uh, 852 Kensington Avenue, we actually have them here as well, councilman will have them uh, as well, and uh, we ask you, it's a very simple form, okay, we don't ask for any financial information, uh, we will verify that you own your home and are living there, we have to do that, but you just put your name, your phone number, and a little information about your family. You know, I've been in the Fillmore District for 50 years. I'm, I've been a volunteer at St. Stanislaus for three years, and I'm a widow. You tell us whatever you want to tell us. But then you list five different projects that you want us to accomplish. We're committing to do at least one. Okay, so I'm going to be candid with you. We're going to get 500 applications, and there'll be like 350 families that will need a new roof. We typically do between 10 and 20 roofs. It depends on weather. It depends on the volunteers that show up. It depends on resources. So we will do some roofs, but we ask for four other things other than a roof. But we actually tell you on the application that only a handful of people will get a brand new roof. A brand new roof in the city of Buffalo can cost $30,000, $40,000. And again, we will do a boatload of roofs, but we ask people to fill out five things. Now, if, we, uh, if you're, yeah. So on the back, you talk a little bit about the project. So the, the painting, you say, I need my garage painted. Or front porch, my, my front porch is rotted or I need new steps, but you give some information. And then on the bottom, you just sign and realize, uh, sign and date it and drop, us, drop it off, okay? You'll be entered into a lottery. The lottery happens on June 8th at our building at 852 Kensington Avenue, and also will be uh, on the Facebook page of Councilman, um, Councilman's Facebook page as well. So you'll be entered in the lottery. If you're a church in the Fillmore District, you get to nominate two families. I'm going to be very transparent. We're faith-based. We want to work through the local church. It's very important. And so if you're a pastor of a church, you get a different form. It's called a church nomination form. We have these here as well. If you need any forms, you can email us. We'll make sure you get it. But you get to nominate two families, either that go to your church or in your community, that you know there's a special situation, a widow, an elderly couple, a single mom, somebody battling cancer. We're going to trust the pastors and the leaders of churches in this district to tell us who needs the most help. And you get to nominate two families. Now I'm going to look in the eyes and tell you very simply, we are going to do those two families. We are going to serve those families you give us. Whatever amount of families that we, uh, we, we, we bring in, and by the way, that has to be done in the next week. So churches, you have roughly a week to turn in your nomination. It's a very short turnaround because we're doing this in just, what, seven weeks. So we got to move very quickly. But church applications have to be in by June 3rd at 5 p.m. Excuse me. Uh, on May 20th. May 20th. So if you're a church leader, your church has to turn it in by May 20th by 5 p.m. You can email it to us. You can drop it off at our building at 852 Kensington Avenue. Uh, but please get it to us. Uh, but pick two families. Now, anyone in your church can apply for help. So you can have 80 people in your church, pick two families, or can help those two families. But you can ask all 78 other families to fill out an application, and they'll be entered in that lottery. So let's just say 13 churches nominate 23 families. Then on that night in June, on June 3rd, at 5 p.m., then we'll pick the other 77 winners. And then we always pick an additional 10. We don't announce their names in case we do the background check and someone isn't in the Fillmore District or they don't own their home. So um, I just want to be very transparent about that as well. Now, every year we do more than 100 homes, but we commit to at least 100. We can't control the weather. If it rains four days, we're not going to do 20 roofs. We're not going to paint 28 homes like we did last year in the Maston District. Oh, my gosh. Our volunteers, they were painting machines last year. They did an amazing job. And by the way, we followed all the lead paint rules because the Community Foundation of Greater Buffalo uh, has given us a nice grant those two years, and they gave us a nice grant for this year as well. So they're helping us with that. All right. Um, I'm just about done. Sponsorships. So um, were we, were we going to share this? We were going to share it. So we need your help. 
Um, we're going to do this no matter what, but there's a way that your church and business can sponsor eight days of Hope Buffalo. Every dollar that we raise will be spent here. All right? So I'm going to be very transparent with you again. Last year, God provided funds. We ended up with about $27,000 extra at the end of the event. It's still sitting there, and we're pulling it to this year. Wow. All right? So the good news is we're starting out with $27,000 in the bank. That's good. Uh, we already have some churches like New Story Church, the chapel, some businesses like Turk Masters, Niagara Gutter, uh, Sherwin-Williams that are wanting to pay uh, to be a part of this and sponsor the event. You could sponsor this for as low as $500, and you can have your name of your church or business be a part of AD's Old Buffalo. If you are able, there are different levels, all the information is on the back table. We are looking for at least two more partners that would sow $25,000 or more into this outreach. I'm going to be candid with you. Um, we will continue to do this as long as the local church and business support it, volunteers show up, and we can raise those dollars. This is not a hard ask. You can't do $62.5 million of work and, and, not, and do sleep at night about money. But I'm going to ask you to share with others and pray about your involvement sponsoring this outreach. If you have any questions, see myself or anyone else on our team. Promotional materials. We have promotional materials in the back of the room. Uh, our website has our, uh, the, the video. It's live as we speak. You can volunteer right now. In fact, I got a text. We already have volunteers coming from Texas, Mississippi, Louisiana, to Buffalo in July. Is that crazy? I mean, that just, this is going to be a great opportunity for the local church to work with others to support families in need. We want you to be excited about that. Remember, if you come for at least three days, we're going to give you a free ticket to go to Six Flags. I don't know about you, I'm getting old, but I still love roller coasters, and I love Christian music, so I know I'm going to be there. Thank you to Donna Russo. I think I saw her here a little bit earlier. Hey, Donna, our executive director at Kingdom Bound. But, um, okay, I think we're just about done. Are we done, Chandler? I want to introduce my staff really quick. It's not my staff. So 50,000 volunteers travel the country, and up to two years ago, we had two staff members. Talk about lean and mean. Well, we're not mean, but lean, right? Uh, but now we have a whopping five staff members, and we cannot do anything with the staff that uh, is here today. And so I just want to introduce our director of operations. She's also the executive assistant for me. Her name is Chandler Gurley. Chandler, she's from Tupelo, Mississippi. Give it up to Chandler. She sounds like she's from Mississippi. She's a Southern Belle. She's amazing. She loves the Lord. She loves others. And we're thankful and blessed that she's part of the team. Also, our safe house ministry director is here. So we've done nine safe houses. We're doing another one today. Her name is Hannah Fletcher. She's in the back. Hannah, give her a wave. She actually lives in Buffalo. Yeah, go Hannah. Yes. And a future volunteer is coming in about seven weeks. So we're really excited about that volunteer, too. In transparency, that's my daughter, my first grandchild, so I'm really pumped about that. <laughs> and uh, I think Jim Donmeyer's here, too. Jim, uh, we, yeah, there's Jim. Jim works out of the Buffalo location, maintains the building. He does so much work. He's one of our rapid response leaders. He'll lead thousands of people right after a disaster. So uh, give it up to Jim Donmeyer. He's right there. Thank you. Awesome. All right. We're going to take three minutes for Q's, Q's and A's, if you have a couple questions, and at that point, and I do want to give a couple more shout-outs, and I know it's going to happen, I'm going to, mess, I'm going to mess this up, but let's do this. If you're a volunteer leader with 8 Days of Hope, you just want to stand up real quick so we can give you a, a shout-out. Anyone else here? A volunteer? Uh, Leroy in the back, okay, over here, two young ladies over here. Thank you, Mike. Thank you. If you're a local church leader, any church, we just stand up real quick so we can acknowledge you as well. Thank you, Randy. Yeah, thank you, Brother Tom. Thank you. And thank you. Thank you for coming. We appreciate that. If you own a home in the Fillmore District, and you were just here to kind of check things out, if you're here, just raise your hand as well so we can kind of see you. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I love the Fillmore District. I really do. It's, it's a special place. Now, I'm a Bennett guy, but I love the Broadway market growing up. And I remember bringing baskets, Mike, to St. Stanislaus to get them blessed oh, wow. uh, many years ago. So uh, back when they did masses in Latin and in Polish, I think, here as well. So uh, I didn't know how to say some of those names, just not Councilman Mitch's, but that's a whole other story. All right. A, cu a couple questions, and then we're going to wrap up. But we'll hang out as long as you want. Um, I've lost three pounds since we started. This is great. The heat, oh, my gosh. And I'm glad I wore black, right? Any questions about what's going on here uh, this summer? Can you kind of run down on how important it is to get sponsors? 
Yeah, sure. Right now, we're still looking for some sponsors of this event. We've got some ask out, and we're hoping and believing, and we know he's going to provide. But if someone's interested in supporting this outreach, even though I believe we'll have dozens that will show up and want to be a part of it, they can reach out to us at info at 8 hopecom They can stop us on the way out. Um, again, we're doing this, and we're going to do it in excellence no matter what. I just think it's so important for businesses and churches and individuals to say, Fillmore, we got your back this year. We might not live there, we've never been there, but we're going to do the right thing and find a way to support this. So again, if you're interested in supporting this outreach, please reach out because we'd love to include you in this. We really would. Yes? The need for churches and people coming? Yes, yeah, yeah, so great. So Kent from New Covenant is asking about hosting volunteers. So our volunteers lodge with us for free, and they don't stay at the Marriott. Nothing against the Marriott. But we usually put them up in local churches. And so we're working out the final details. The men sleep in one place, the women sleep in another place. We have RVs at New Covenant again this year uh, and elsewhere. We are going to be based in the Fillmore District. Our headquarters will be at a school here in the district. And uh, so we, uh, we might be reaching out to you on that as well. Hey, and as we're leaving, thank you, WDCX. Love you guys so much. Thank you for your support. Now yeah, give up to WDCX. Yeah, they're going to a lunch date. I know they're doing something. Yes, ma'am. I do talk fast. I'm sorry. Sure. Yes, ma'am. So May th May twentieth, the church application has to be in. Yes, and it's right on the application. No, and then on June third, anyone's application can be turned in. So churches by the twentieth, and then we have two more weeks, and we'll know by then how many. People, they will be picking out the lottery process on June 8th. Each church can now make two families. Each family has to list five projects. And then if your church nominates two families, we're going to serve them. We don't know which projects we visit them. Okay? Under promise and over deliver. I've learned this, right? So don't go out promising that everyone's going to get a brand new roof and a brand new porch. We're going to do dozens of porches and we hope dozens of roofs. But we can't do hundreds of roofs and hundreds of porches. We're going to do some painting, some landscaping, some concrete work, some mechanicals, and some other things like that. Any other questions? Yes, ma'am. Yes. Sure. Yeah. So, so uh, the question is, there's a widow, she definitely needs a porch, she doesn't know if she has other projects. We do ask, list that number one, and, and, but she doesn't even have four other projects. She just has to, and it could be fixing a mailbox, it could be fixing a window that's broken, or maybe a toilet's not working properly. It doesn't have to be a major project, um, because something like that, we might do like three of her projects, but she does have to enter five projects. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am, in the back? Yeah, there's no applications for volunteering. It's all done online. You can volunteer. Bring your kids. The greatest sermon I've ever heard, and I've, I've heard a lot of you guys preach. You've got some great preachers in this room, right? Um, but the greatest sermon I've ever heard is the one I saw. Bring your kids to ADA's Old Buffalo. So you can volunteer online as we speak. You just submit all your information. Tell us your T-shirt size, what days you're coming, and we're going to start communicating to you between now and July 16th. We have done this with 55,000 55, people, so we've learned a lot from our own mistakes, but everything is done online, and Tino's an amazing job. Time for maybe one or two. Yes? Okay, I, I came in on the field and my, 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 my question is that it's a lottery project. Yeah, so there's, there's a process. A church can nominate a family, and then everyone else, there's a lottery process. And so if you want to wait right after the meeting, either myself or Chandler will meet with you and make sure you understand that process. You have to live in the district and be living in the home. Excuse me, you have to own the home. It's got to be the Fillmore district. Sorry. All right, one more. Anybody else? We good? And we're not going. Yes, ma'am. Each church gets two nominations. So this is a church question. So Pastor Al is at a church. His wife's at a church. John's at, and they're all the same church. They don't get six nominations. You guys got to talk together and pick the two families you want to help. Okay. Each church in the district gets to nominate two families. Not that complicated, right? I told you I'm not very smart. <laughs> All right. Um, at this point, 
We're going to hang out. Any questions you want? Aren't you glad you came and it was a beautiful day, right? Amen.